I'll show you a little bit of how I did some of the setup. So here uh, we have our car. Uh, we could see that the scale is way too high. So we're pretty much uh, transforming that down uh, to 0 0.01. And then I'm using this uh, code right here, which is going to get me the shop material path and put into a group name. Um, this is going to be probably useful way later. Um, so I can, you know, can talk about it at a later point. Okay. So right here, um, uh, we're blasting the, the wheels. So we got all four wheels, um, blasted here over here is the opposite. It's the, it's a duplicate. So it's just the opposite, um, delete non selected. So we have the body and then we're bringing that group and placing it into wheels. We're taking away the brake calipers. And then in here we have all separate wheels as well. And then we're merging them back down. So that's just so we have flexibility um, for later if, if we need to. And uh, in here we have the brake calipers and we're going to have um, pretty much a, a group here called steering. Uh, maybe we may need it, maybe not. We have our caliper left, caliper right. Uh, these are all just things that, you know, sometimes you want the flexibility to group them in case you want to change the color of them or uh, do some sort of effect or it's just for flexibility. So we, here we have it in red and green, and then here we're blasting and only leaving the left side, and here we're only leaving the right side. So as we continue down the chain, um, here we, this is where we do our, our rigid body car rig. So in here, Right here, so I have all four wheels here, uh, right here, and I'm putting them into a, a group. So this is gonna be a primitive group. So this goes and trickles down the chain and we go into the RVD car rig and we'll see that we have the wheels group. So if I remove that, um, pretty much the rig kinda like brakes a little bit the wheels are really big and you know it's not constrained to the wheel so that's the reason why we create that group and here we create the wheels and there you go and then they pop back in so the next thing that this that we're going to do here is going to do the rbd car follow path and that requires you to connect the rbd car rig to all the three inputs in there. And in the last input, we're gonna input our curve. So if you highlight over here, you can see input curve. And then we're gonna grab our curve that we created here. I just did a regular kind of simple curve. I subdivided it, um, did some smoothing on it, and then translated it, made it a little bit bigger. And now inside of the RBD car follow path, what I've done is inside the curve position, there is a uh, slider here that will pretty much tell you where the car is gonna be driving to. So from zero, so zero is at the beginning and then one is all the way at the end. So if we rewind this and we do a a playback and also remember you want to animate the wheels and the suspension so make sure that you have this checked otherwise uh, the wheels are not going to turn on the curve so like when the car starts turning uh, you want the wheels to turn with it as well so if we do a playback here we can see our cars following the curve 
And then that kind of like little drift uh, thing that's happening is pretty much this drift uh, option here. Overshoot, that means the car is going to kind of push a little bit further from the curve. And banking, the car is going to shift from left to right in, in the suspension. So yeah, so if we go here, I did like a, a quick little camera rig. And we can see, all right, let's go back. Let's lock our cameras and back a little bit. And you can kind of see it does a little bit of a drift and then Right here on this turns like a, a little bit more of a harsh turn. You could kind of see the the banking a little bit in the front uh, suspension there. Um, you can exaggerate it. Uh, let me pin this view so we're stuck on here. And uh, if we go and we put banking, you can kind of see what that does in real time. So that kind of you know, gives the suspension a, a less stiffer or more stiffer uh, setting there. And then the drift obviously is gonna, it's kind of, it's gonna whip the back two wheels and. So I think this looks okay. Um, we can kind of move forward with the next step. Um, the other, option is uh doing the same car rig right um the only thing that's going to be a little bit different is that in the rbd car rig we're adjusting the steering to be about one so it's turning right and then when we bring our rbd bullet solver you're going to need your car rig linked into it just like the other one and then on the fourth input, you're going to have your collision geometry, which is going to be a grid that I set up here. So going back to the RBD car rig, we put our steering to the right and we're going to add some speed, which um, our bullet solver is going to detect. So I put 120. This is, this is pretty much the speed that I wanted to try to reach. Of course, it's not going to reach that because we're spinning in circles. And um, the steering increments, uh, these are just other adjustments you can do. And then speed increments I put to 10. So let's test this out and see how it's looking. So if we go back and we go to the RBD car rig, forgot to mention, you can go to configure. And here you see your wheel layout. So right now we have four wheels. Um, I put it to configure mode to individual. The reason why is because I want um, the tire friction uh, to be in the in the front and left and right to be one. So I want it to be uh, have some friction. And then in the back left and the rear, we're going to have less friction. So what's going to happen is that the back wheels are going to slide and we're going to get that drift effect that you see. Okay, so I think that's good. All right, so the next thing we're going to do here is add our brake calipers. Um, inside of the bullet solver, I usually just, uh, I want to import. So in here, I bring in these attributes. The, the one that I really need is orient. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave that for now. And so we want to bring in our brake calipers. So, all right. So. We're going to do something different. So we're going to do an add and we're going to get every one of these points and then delete them. So delete geometry, but keep points. So we have the body, we have the back two wheels and the front. So in here now we're going to select 
uh, our points. So we'll go to points, select those two, delete, delete and unselected. We got our points here. And now we got our two wheels. And now we could get our transform node and move to origin, move to origin. And here we connect both the calipers and the body. Okay, so now the problem is that we have the brake calipers moving with, um, with the wheel and we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is create a, so what we're gonna do is create a point VOP, dive inside, we're not gonna use these guys, so we'll put a bind. What we wanna bring in is the orientation. So orient, and we need that to be a quaternion. So for that, we're gonna need a four floats vector, and then this is gonna turn into this kind of yellow, greenish, neon green, neon yellow uh, color. So the next thing we're gonna do a quaternion to Euler. So we're gonna turn that vector into rotation. Um, the next node is the converting it back to Euler to quaternion. And then we're gonna do a bind export to orient. Okay, uh, so in here's where we're gonna change some of the things here. So we're gonna add a multiply node. We're gonna select that, the rotation to input one, and then the product to rotation. And then in here, we're gonna do a promote parameter, double click on that. Now we got this parameter here, and what we'll do is create a three floats vector. We'll put Y to one. And now our wheels should be fixed. So now we have the brake caliper staying in place as the car is driving. So you can see the brake caliper staying in the same spot. So we'll just kind of rotate our brake caliper here. And there you have it. So that's how you do the brake caliper part. And then for this one, it's a little bit different. Uh, we'll, we'll copy this setup here. And um, copy this as well. So the only difference here is that we don't have orientation for some reason. So we're still, so if we do the turn here, let's do, let's merge in our, our brakes with our body here. So when we're doing our first turn, we could see that the brake calipers stay in place. Um, we don't want that. So what we're gonna end up doing is a little bit of a hack and the hack is pretty much a trail stop. So we're gonna bring in the trail and in the trail it has a good option here that's uh, called compute velocity. So now we have the 
car moving and it's actually going to where we want it to go. And because we don't have um, and because we don't have the orientation, we're not worried about the rotation uh, moving. So the only thing I guess to mention is when the car stops, for some reason with, with the rig, I haven't been able to figure out how to properly um, stop the car from doing this glitch in the wheel. You'll see what I'm talking about. So towards the end, there's like this glitch of the wheel. So my thinking is we may just, we can just use a, like a time shift maybe. And then around frame 285, So we can delete this, delete channel. We'll create a keyframe here, 285, right before our glitch, and then we'll put frame one here. So now when we drive, then it just stops completely. So that's just a quick little hack and stuff. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much the setup of of the car and how to use the two uh, different nodes we have. So the car RBD follow path and the uh, RBD bullet solver. And the next part of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do the burnout part with the smoke using the axiom solver. And uh, stay tuned.